broadcast by a number of high-powered radio transmitters operating deep in the Soviet Union since July 4, 1976. Though the official Defense Department explanation of the woodpecker is that it is an over-the-horizon radar designed to track U.S. missile launches, some uh, scientists suspect well, that the woodpecker is designed to interfere with human uh, brain function. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the potential that this has for producing a direct psychoactive effect upon the total American population is there, has never been disproven. Dr. Robert Becker is a pioneer in the field of bioeffects of electromagnetism. Uh, the signal range within which the woodpecker operates is that which has been reported by many investigators to produce a tranquilizing effect upon animals. We are just incredibly sensitive to these magnetic stimuli. Dr. Bob Beck, a Ph.D. in nuclear engineering, has done extensive research into electromagnetic effects on humans. The signal was permeating power grids in the United States. It was being picked up by power lines, re-radiated. It was coming into the homes on the light circuits. I was surprised uh, after coming here that the influence of electromagnetic fields uh, was uh, almost completely ignored here. Dr. Larissa Volonskaya was heavily involved in Soviet electromagnetic research before being allowed to emigrate to the United States. She told CNN about Soviet research in electromagnetic effects. They demonstrated theoretically and also demonstrated experimentally that um, Low frequency, low uh, um, energy electromagnetic fields also can um, uh, possess biological influence, biological efficiency, yeah? uh, because uh, uh, any field not only carries energy but also carries information. She stated that the research was carried out on orders from the Soviet government. Of course, uh, the military were extremely interested in, uh, in uh, this potential of remote influence. Is the United States military working in the field of electronic mind control? Officially, the Department of Defense will not comment because the subject area is, quote, too sensitive. But CNN has learned from this government scientist who did not want to be identified that a Navy laboratory conducted research into the use of an RF device for counterterrorism and special operations. It's possible to entrain a certain percentage of a population, apparently, with weak magnetic fields. The study also showed that RF signals could dissolve certain types of rat brain cells at a distance, causing disorientation and nausea. According to the scientist, even though the program was successful, the government never followed up on it. Dr. James Frazier did electromagnetic research for the U.S. Air Force for many years. At one time, he proposed a battlefield RF weapon system. You could uh, make a, uh, an antenna that would be carryable by a helicopter, and that this could be expected to produce uh, a wide variety of symptoms, actually, by humans who happen to be standing in the beam. According to Dr. Fraser, the Air Force never followed up. At Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, another RF weapons concept is nicknamed the Brain Bomb. According to the book Star Warriors, the brain bomb would focus a nuclear blast into a huge pulse of low-frequency RF energy that would stun huge numbers of troops. Apparently, it too has not yet been funded. The Department of Defense will not comment about Soviet RF weapons, or if American RF weapons development is going forward. However, experts interviewed by CNN say that the Soviets are apparently ahead and could exploit that lead in a surprise strategic move a move that could have grave consequences for the United States. From Washington, this is Chuck DeCaro, CNN Special Assignments. This is a Tesla coil. It was invented some 90 years ago, but now a growing number of experts in the United States feel that it may form the basis of a new generation of Soviet weapons. They are known as radio frequency or RF weapons because they operate in the radio frequency spectrum. Their existence is noted in this U.S. Department of Defense publication, which says the Soviets could use them to destroy components of missiles, to interfere with radar and other electronic systems, and even to alter human mind functions. The concept of RF weaponry was predicted at the turn of the century by Nikola Tesla, an American who had emigrated from Yugoslavia. He is best remembered as the man who invented alternating current electricity. In 1899, Tesla built this giant coil which produced 10 million volts of artificial lightning. 
From it, he theorized the possibility of death rays. This and many other of his ideas about the physics of electricity were ridiculed by the scientific establishment. Pure science is not a sure thing. You can't predict what's going to work out and what's not going to work out. Robert Golka, a research scientist, built a replica of the Tesla coil about 80 years later. Golka was trying to produce a phenomenon known as ball lightning. He also used the Tesla coil to conduct testing for the U.S. Air Force. What I was doing was setting in maybe five-foot-long models of advanced fighter aircraft, and we would want to try to find out which part, of the airplane, which part of the airplane was more vulnerable to lightning strikes, whether it was a wingtip or the canard where the pilot sat. The These bend, experiments the could also the demonstrate the effect of the electromagnetic pulse of a nuclear blast, and, Golka says, the effect of RF weapons as well. Golka thinks that Tesla's theory that electromagnetic power could be transmitted through the Earth and its atmosphere without wires is a key element in the Soviet Union's work on RF weapons. Tesla's novel weapons theories were generally ignored in the United States. Nikola Tesla died in 1943, and after the Second World War, all his papers and effects were shipped to his native Yugoslavia, where they were enshrined in a museum. Some say that that museum proved to be a gold mine for Soviet weapons scientists. We haven't even formally, so far as I know, to ourselves, admitted that these weapons exist in the hands of the Soviet Union. Weapons analyst Tom Bearden, a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel, is among a small group of scientists and engineers who believe that the Soviets have perfected Tesla's ideas and are developing radio frequency weapons on a scale unimagined in this country. There have been a series of tests of these kinds of weapons, apparently, for a number of years. For example, airliners from Iran uh, before the fall of the Shah saw deep within the Soviet Union very large uh, glowing spherical balls of light which started out small and then expanded to very large size which are apparently uh, these kinds of weapons for use in an anti-ballistic missile defense role. Bearden believes that these satellite photographs are of mysterious non-nuclear explosions near an uninhabited island in the East Siberian Sea and that they are discharges from an RF weapon that uses intersecting energy beams called scalars. In doing so, you can create, for example, either an electromagnetic explosion at a distance, or you can create an electromagnetic implosion at a distance, the extraction of energy from a distant point. Uh, this would look like a cold explosion, so to speak. And I believe the thing on April the 9th, 1984, off the coast of Japan that involved several 747 jet airliners, I believe that incident was a test of a cold explosion weapons. At least it met all the characteristics. Pilot Doug Happ was in one of the five airline crews that saw an incredibly large cloud rising from the moonlit overcast below. Uh, it looked like a plate coming up through an overcast, and it, but it just kept expanding. And as it got higher, it was apparent that you could see right through the middle of it, so it looked like a big smoke ring. At the time that we um, first noticed this cloud, we weren't sure what to do, and we took no evasive action because uh, we didn't know which way to go. And I think eventually we either ran through it or it uh, completely engulfed us. App says when his flight reached Anchorage, Alaska, it was checked for radioactive contamination. None was found. Dr. James Frazier has done extensive research in electromagnetic effects for the U.S. Air Force. It could be due to a, a strong electromagnetic beam but we don't know that. They can also be caused by chance terminal gradients. We've had for several years studies of clear air turbulence, for instance, which have produced this kind of a disruption. Uh, the people who cited those uh, are experienced pilots and should have been familiar with that kind of event. And this apparently was something outside their experience. There have been a number of times when Soviet technological surprise has upset the strategic balance. In 1948, the Soviets detonated an A-bomb years before it was thought possible. In 1957, the Soviets stunned the world by launching Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. And in 1976, the Soviets were discovered to have been embarked upon a program to build particle beam weapons, a discovery which led, five years later, to America's Star Wars program. In each case, the United States was able to regain the balance. But this time, with radio frequency weapons, some scientists feel that the Soviet lead may be permanent. In my next report, how radio frequency devices can be used as weapons against the human mind. Chuck DeCaro, CNN, on special assignment.